Okay, welcome to the Swing Trading with Cycles channel. Today, we are going to talk about the most important chart pattern there is. I say bar, like, bar none, the most important, and it's because this chart pattern could save you lots and lots of money. And as Warren Buffett says, you know, the first rule of investing is don't lose money. The second rule is refer to rule number one. If you protect the downside, you'll do well. So this is a chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Just as it happens, so happens, we're doing this. Um, we're doing this on November fifteenth, twenty twenty-two. This is a big picture chart. So every candle is one full year, right? So this candle here is twenty twenty-two that I'm hovering over, and this candle here is actually eighteen ninety-six. So this is data going back well over a hundred years, like a hundred thirty, a hundred you know, th uh, 25 years, something like that. And so it gives you a really big picture view. If you're not familiar with the way candlesticks work, I really recommend, there's t tons of content out there. Definitely recommend you get familiar with that because that's the cornerstone of the way this works. I mean, it also works with, um, what do you call it, bars as well. Same, same idea. You just need to be able to, you need to be able to see the open, high, low, close data. So, and that's what a candlestick is. And I'll just refer to that really quickly. This is the open, high, low, close data. So open, high, low, close, right? This is just your adjusted close and this is volume. But these four numbers are what the candlesticks are made of. So the candlesticks are a visual representation of these four numbers, which you can do this kind of analysis in Excel. This is, I used to do this I now use, you know, mostly, you know, the price action, just the visual aid as that shortcut. So going back to this chart. So again, each of these candles is just representing those four numbers. And you can see it's plotted against this. So and green is means price is moving down uh, or excuse me, price is moving higher. Red means price is moving lower. So that's kind of intuitive. And so what is a swing high? Right. So the first thing that you need to understand to. Um, the first thing I, I would say is you need to understand that markets trend. And when I say trend, I mean that they they move in almost sort of a zigzag pattern. So if I will open up the drawings here, these arrows mark the various swing highs, right? And just so that you understand what I mean by trend, imagine something like this, right? So that's an uptrend. In this case, it's an uptrend in the sense that you, you see these highs. Each of these is a high. Those are the swing highs. And each of these is a low. And we'll talk about swing lows in a separate video, but a swing high is what I want to focus on here. It's really important to know when you're on the wrong side of a swing high. So like if you're here, you don't want to be long, right? Because you're declining. If you're here, you don't want to be long because you're declining, right? And so the key is to spot when has this happened so that if you're on this side of it, you get out before you get all the way down to here. And this isn't an uptrend, right? Now, a in a downtrend, it's the same kind of idea, except it's just kind of moving in reverse. So you're doing something like this. Oops, sorry, I'll do that again. So this is obviously shorter, but same kind of idea. That's a swing high. That's a swing high. That's a swing high. Notice in that other example, the swing highs were moving higher. That's why it's an uptrend. In this case, the swing highs are moving lower. It's a downtrend. So it's even more important that you sell. Like you don't want to be caught here going declining, here declining. And so just keep this visual in mind. That's what you want to be able to see on this chart, Right. This is a swing high, for instance. This is the granddaddy of the all swing highs from 1929, right? The, the, the crash that everyone is aware of. This is your Great Depression. So again, each of these candles is a full year. So that was 1929, 1930, 31, 32 was when you finally got your bottom. And so that was a time to avoid, right? Like if you, if you were able to spot that a swing high had happened, 
you could have mitigated risk any point here because we ended up having like a 94% decline. So you could obviously save yourself a lot of money. But what is a, how do you define a swing high exactly? So a swing high is what happens when price makes a lower low. So in this case, again, so that, that always just means making a low below a low of the previous candle. Okay, so if we use this as our example, the 1929 swing high, this is activated below the low for that year. So a low for that year is 195.35. Uh, so we'll just put this bar here, right, right there. So you can see that just visually. So once this candle crosses below the low from that year, this is now a swing high. That's what the arrow indicates. And you can see we have these smaller ones here in 1901, 1906, 1909, 1917. This is obviously the big one, though. Because notice price slices through that. And then what it, does it do? That's And this is 1930. So in, and then 1931, it makes another lower low. So below that one. And then 1932, the final makes another lower low. So that's four years or three years of making lower lows. And think about that. That means any buy in this year is underwater once you go below that level. And then you do the same thing this year for any buy that happened this year and then so forth. That's how that works, right? It means all of a sudden you've wiped out all the gains from the previous candle. And the higher the time frame the swing high happens in, the more important it is. And obviously here we're looking at the annual swing high. So next we're going to look at what happens when we zoom in to the six month chart and the quarterly chart. Okay, so if we zoom in, if we go to the six month chart, so that means every candle is now six months versus um, you know a full year. You can see the the six month candle that started all of this, right? Like you can see it. The low for that candle is also 195. So it actually kind of took over the entire year in that way. So I think one way to think about this is once you cross below 195, and, and as we go into smaller time frames, you'll see there's a signal sooner. That might be your chance to sell, right? Notice this thing bottomed at 30. What, what's the bottom? At $40.56. <clears throat> so you could have sold at 195 and saved yourself all of that decline. Now, there's no way you could have known it was it was going to just continue to, to decline. It's a matter, but it's a matter of mi risk mitigation, right? If you see a potential swing high, then you're like, okay, maybe I step on the sidelines. And I'll tell you, a swing high on an annual chart or a um, or a, you know a six month chart is a big deal. And actually, in this case. Your signal, your bearish signal was actually right there, right? Because, and, and this is a little bit more complicated, but you can think about this as this candle marked a high, right? And then this candle made a new high. So then once this candle goes below the low of this candle, right? I'll zoom in, just make sure that we're looking at, everyone can see. Once this, so this candle you can see makes a new high above this candle. And then it goes red and it makes a new low. That's an important concept. It's called an outside candle. And that is a candle that makes a new high and a new low compared to the previous candle. So you can see this. This candle makes a new high and then it also makes a new low. And if it closes red, then it's a bearish outside candle. If it closes green, it's a bullish outside candle, which means, you know, it's either moving higher or it's moving lower. In this case, it was red. So it was moving lower. And so that candle, this candle here, actually has a low of 281. So that was so so that's the way to kind of think about it. If you zoom into the lower time frames, you're able to get a sort of early warning signal. So you could have actually sold right around 280 instead of waiting for it to make that low at 90, 195, which was down here, right? And if we zoom into the quarterly chart, right? You can get an even earlier signal, right? Like look at this. This is th that's how this works, right? And so you can see the high came on this quarter, and this is a very bearish looking candle. You can see a lot of upper wick, and we're not going to talk about that in too much detail here, but that's a pretty that's always a bad sign. 
this candle has a low at 332 right so that is higher than the 285 that we just talked about and so again that is an even earlier signal right so like if you're thinking about it in real time the quarterly like this is going to actually happen in reverse right you're going to have their quarterly swing high before you have the six month and before you have the yearly so once this big green red candle right goes red right like and starts to move lower below this low here at 332 like just physically crosses below that line you're like oh maybe i pull the ripcord again that doesn't mean you know it's going to go from 332 down to $40, you know, the 90% decline we talked about. You're not, not saying that you can know that in advance, but what you do know in real time is that price is going lower. Price is moving lower. We're below the low from the previous candle. All of those gains have been wiped out. Every buy in that time period is now underwater. That's a bad sign. And obviously, Again, the higher the time frame, the more important. I, I'll tell you a quarterly swing high is a very bearish signal. That's the other general concept to understand is that the these signals happen less and less frequently at the higher time frames, which means they happen a lot more frequently at the lower time frames. Like on a one minute chart, you're going to have all kinds of swing highs all the time. They just end up failing, right, if you're in an uptrend and just keep going higher. Uh, so... If you spot something on the quarterly chart, that's pretty big. And then we zoom in on the monthly, right? Not to belabor the point, but let's just keep with this same, you know, again, we're examining the big one, right? The 1929, you know, Black October, I think they call it. So you can see monthly chart, that is that, uh, that September 20, yep. So September makes a high at 386, right? So we make a high at 386 and then... The low for that month is 341. So that's just a little bit higher than your quarterly signal, right? Because your quarterly signal told you um, 380, right? And this is saying 341. Or, or excuse me, it was a little bit, uh, not 380, sorry. But the, the point here is that is your swing high on the monthly level. Whereas if you waited for the full quarter, you would have had, you know, you would have had to endure a little bit more downside. So you could have saved yourself at 341, right? This also actually goes down all the way to the weekly, right? And let's see how that looked. It's kind of incredible that you have all this data. Obviously, it wasn't this accessible in real time back then by any means, which is, you know, the beauty of us having this luxury, right? So if you look at... So it's this week here. So the week of September 2nd, 1929, that's the week we have our swing high. The low from that week is 367. So when we went below 367, we had a weekly swing high. And then we got more bearish follow through and it turned into a monthly swing high. And then it turned into a quarterly and a six month annual. And you can see, as we, as we saw, we got mul multiple years of downside after that. So that doesn't mean that every swing high has to end. And it's funny, like this is, you can see all this wick here is that price action on that lower time frame, on those lower time frames, I should say. And if you look at something like the financial, uh, the dot com bust, that's this swing high. This was your global financial crisis. If we look at how those looked on a quarterly level, right, that's your global financial crisis. You can just see just straight down quarters. That's your, this had a much gentler slope, the dot-com bust. And this is the Dow Jones Industrial, so it didn't have the same massive washout that the NASDAQ did, for instance. But the point here is you can spot the level where, okay, that's your swing high. I need to be careful, right? Like in this case, for the you know global financial crisis, it was October 2007 when we went below you know 12,724, right? And the eventual low was 6,400. So, you know, another 50% below that, essentially. And so, as we think about what's happening right now, at some point, we're, like, this is this is the swing high, just to be clear, that we are under right now, right? So, that swing high is active below 32,272. 32,272. And so, you'll notice we're actually above that right now. 
So we're already kind of pressing into that territory. Um, separate video about swing lows, but it's the same concept except the reverse. You know, it's bullish, so it marks an, a low versus a high. And so that's what we're working on right here, which we'll talk about in, in, in that subsequent video. But this concept alone will save you, depending on the size of your account, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands. It's about not losing money. And when you spot a swing high on any time frame, I'd say any swing high that happens on the daily level or above is something you want to pay attention to, depending on your time frame, right? Certainly a weekly swing high. That's a big that's a big deal because it means we're probably moving into a weekly cycle low, for instance, um, and those can get nasty depending on the timing um, and the and the sort of broader context. So that's the that's what I wanted to review today. If you do have questions, definitely put them in the comments. I'll I'll answer what I can. But this is probably the most important concept for any investor, trader, anyone that wants to get involved in the markets to understand. A swing high is how downtrends begin, and downtrends lead to lower prices. So you need to understand when a swing high has occurred so that you can hit the exit button. And it doesn't mean you have to panic sell. You have to. You can be tactical about it. That's what the other videos on this channel are about. But having that overall alertness and understanding that context is incredibly important.